All right, so I'm ready to upset all of you people right now, okay. especially if you're watching. Here we go. All you right. Ready? You're not well, ready for this. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Here we are. We're ready to talk about our passionate subject of pizza. Yes. <laughs> Who is it? Sorry about that. <laughs> like, like at home, like I got up early to talk about pizza. What's going on here? Yes. <laughs> all right, Austin, lead us in this first conversation. Pepperoni does not belong on pizza. That's right. I said it. I wow. said it. That's right. That's right. And for all of y'all out there who love pepperoni, everyone watching this right now, does not belong on pizza. Wow. Yeah, wow. that's right. Awesome. It takes right a off. right off yeah. the gates. That's right. right Controversy. Off <laughs> right off the gates. It takes up too much space. It's you know, it just doesn't go with the texture of pizza. Bacon is better. Is there just so okay. many reasons why just no pepperoni does not well, belong on pizza? Well, I'm gonna have to like just completely negate that <laughs> those on. I'm and I'm I'm gonna upset you because I'm a pineapple person. Okay. So I'm like, and I don't like ham. I think ham is like glutton. I think that's like the really? ultimate level is like ham, like ham or bacon. It's like just <laughs> what like what point in America we like <laughs> Like, bacon we're is like, like no no. We've reached a level where they're like, you know what? Just put any old thing and I'm gonna eat it. Like put <laughs> bacon and broccoli on top of a pizza and I'm I'm gonna eat the whole thing. For broccoli it. doesn't belong there either. But Agreed. you ain't taking I, my bacon from my pizza. Just no, no. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, just saying, no I'm just saying. <laughs> I just say it's wrong. Mm. I just say I said I just said like that's like the perfect you know I, I'm I'm person I like a good pizza for me mm. is either one or two like the first one uh, pineapple and pepperoni on a on a on a, a slice of pizza or I'm a big fan of the buffalo chicken pizza mm. those are that that's that that saved me throughout my I can't eat like that anymore but those those definitely saved me through my college days for sure. <laughs> I okay bacon and pineapple is pretty good instead of okay. ham and pineapple but I was just gonna say something like sardines like I would never put sardines on oh, yeah. <laughs> anchovies remember the anchovies days when people yeah. be like oh no anchovies like yeah, no actually who does that this was like know. person it's like hey like there's a group of like everybody that eats sardines it will eat sardines in general but eat sardines on a slice of pizza should know they're the odd person out like yeah. if they're with a group of people, they should know like, hey, I'm just going to order a whole separate pizza by myself because <laughs> I know that nobody in here eats sardines on a, sardines and onions on a slice of pizza. Whoa, so whoa. bow out. Okay. Whoa, time out. The uh, mixture onions or pizzas. Or onions in general. Well, just on, onions and sardines. I don't like onions on pizza, but I know a lot of people eat. I'm just Peppers saying. Peppers and onions are so good on pizza. They, what else is yeah. Huh? Peppers and onions. Sardines? No sardines, but peppers mm -hmm. and onions are good. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I, I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> Not much. No pepperoni. This is something that I think people get very personal. Like, you can easily offend someone over not liking their pizza topping. Right? Like, like I'm passionate I'm, about it, and I'm like, dude, like, we cannot, like, this is over. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm straight out the gate. No pepperoni for, that's right, right off the gate. Offending Wait, everyone in this chat. Like it. <laughs> right out the gate. It's fine if you don't like it, but if someone attacked you for not liking it, that's like, okay, you gotta go. Right. I wonder, like, how many, how many guys at home are like, they're like, what are they, are they still talking about pizza? They that's are not, still like, talking what? about pizza. <laughs> 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 okay, I had a memory come up on Facebook. Uh, my brother's friend owned a pizzeria on New Scotland and he sold it. So it's Cusados now. But it was Cousins uh, Pizzeria and he did barbecue sauce, smoked so pork, and peppers, and onions. And it was phenomenal. I still think about it. It was three years ago. What, they sold Cousins? I did not know that. Yeah, Cousins is gone. Oh, wow. It's now Cusados. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. One thing I don't like, I don't like um, chain pizza. Like, I, like you'll never catch me at a Domino's. You'll never catch me at a Pizza Hut. You'll never catch me at, uh, oh, definitely not a Papa John's anymore. But you'll, yeah. you'll never catch me at, um, you know, like ordering. Like, I like mom and pop, like good, good oh, yeah. down Italian uh, p 
pizzas, pizzerias. Like, I, like, like those are the only places I order from when it comes to when it comes to pizza. I think they make the best. You know, have like you know because they make it with love. That's <laughs> it. But uh, that's that's where my um, that's where I get my pizza from. I definitely hear all of that. Um, oh, wait, we're switching up. I didn't even see that switch. <laughs> we could keep going. But... <laughs> just, just go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> Domino's is good, people. I accept Domino's. Um, museums, museums and zoos, zoos are open. Yeah. At 50% capacity. What is your favorite zoo or museum? You know, I'm thinking I'm going to start kind of first. Like, I'm going to go the whole Austin route and, like, start start with choosing start with the smoke um i don't dig i used to like zoos but i never well not used to, i never really dug zoos mm. like even when i was a little kid like we would go to for field trips or like my mom and dad would take us to go to the zoo or we would like visit other places and, and go to zoos but like i would like watch them and i would just see like these sad animals <laughs> and, like, either, like i saw we went to the like bronx zoo one time and people were so, we were like, everybody was so excited. And I went there and they're like, oh, now we're going to see the lion. And they show like this one skinny lion in the middle of like the zoo on a hot day and was just sitting on this rock and was just sitting there. And just like, he just looked, like he was just like, like this sad look, like, what have you done to me? Like, <laughs> I'm like docked at by like soccer moms and for kids. I, I was the king of the jungle. People would, animals would bow out my way. I would walk and my, my mane would catch the, the African breeze. And the, and now look, I'm in the middle of New York City. What have you done? Like, ever since I, I never really, I never dug them. Like I would go and just like, oh, all right, let's go to the zoo. But I'm like, I don't, I don't enjoy zoos. Why you got to hate on Madagascar, man? That's a <laughs> those are great movies, you know. <laughs> That's a lie. That's what it was. <laughs> man, man, a gas scar. The pics, that's that's a lie that that's that's perpetuating the zoo. Really? That's perpetuating the idea of the zoo. Listen, those penguins were fire. And I don't care what you say hey, about those, the those penguins. penguins. That's funny. <laughs> but that's I my feel like the zoo, like you said, the animals are sad, but also like the anticipation of going to the zoo feels exciting. And then you get there and you're like, no, nah, now what do we do? I feel like you get there and then you're like, hmm, that smell. No, you know, yeah. like it just hits you. It just kind of percolates in your nose and you're just like, mm, mm, you know, yeah. like, oh, why? Why yeah. is this happening? You know, you know what I really, like, I'm sorry, you were saying? No, go ahead. Go ahead, Austin. You know what I really do enjoy though? Aquariums. I, you know, mm. love aquariums, you know. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Pretty Very, cool. yeah. Like, what's the big one in New York City? I'm terrible at forgetting my roots, and I don't York? care because I'm from Albany. Is, is there one in New York City? There is one in New York City. Um, I know there's one in Boston. The Boston one is a letdown. Is it, it is? really? Mm -hmm. I just wow. went in the fall, and it was like so small. I was expecting something huge. Mystic in Connecticut is good. Yeah. Okay. I know they have one like around here. Um, like yeah, in Rotterdam. Yeah. Around okay. Rotterdam and it's pretty. I, I went to I went to a zoo. I went to like and they they had like this boa constrictor uh, or like and like they were like, we have an anaconda zoo. and it was it was like this like twenty foot long snake or fifteen foot long snake or like fifteen to twenty feet long snake, but it was in a room that was like no bigger than your living room and like that was his life. Oh wow! Like that was that he just like he literally had enough room to like slither half his body from one. End and then have his body maybe to the other end. And that was his life. And I was like, wow, this is just, he just looked up. Like, he just like raised his head and looked at like, everybody, all these little kids just like, hey, look at that. And he just looked up and he just was like, what have I done? What have I done? I feel like the home now. Like, what are they talking about now? Zoos. Zoos. Pizzas and zoos. Zoos. No pepperonis. Zoos. zoos are no aquariums. Yes. Bacon and aquariums. Bacon and aquariums. That's where it's at. All right. What's this one? Sunglasses. Oh, sunglasses. Fashion or function? Here we go. Here we both. Go. Both. both. I agree. Absolutely both. 
Now, I have not taken myself to the eye doctor to get my prescription sunglasses like I'm supposed to when I'm driving. Someone out there, please make sure I do that, you know, soon, please. Just remind me, that would be great. Someone out there, thank you. Appreciate you just thinking of me in the future. But yeah, um, it's definitely both. Um, it's like you have to find that that feng shui, you know, you know yeah. that balance between fashion and function. You know, I feel like that's the best place to be, you know. But I love the music videos where the dudes are wearing their sunglasses and or people who are wearing their sunglasses in the middle of a, in the middle of the what's the word I'm looking for middle of a club, you know, three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you think that's been coming into school every day wearing their sunglasses with a hood up God and like all bundled up. And I was right. like, you look like one of those Muppets with the detective um, jacket and <laughs> he can't the sunglasses. He looks just like him. <laughs> Got that. And I know people. I have, I have like, but like buddies of mine that like go like do that. Like I said, and it's it's an accessory to yeah. the club. Like they got yeah. the, they got the like the pants, the shirt, or the jacket, and like, oh wait, I gotta get the sunglasses. I'm like, it's eleven o'clock at night. Why do you need sunglasses? I, I don't understand. Like what? I like even when I was, I, I never understood. When I would watch the music videos, I'm like, that's like the dumbest thing. Like it's just it, it's like that's like wearing a rain jacket in indoors. Frustrating. Like, like, like it's very dark. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, what? what yeah. You just you're hit like you're you're blocking your like you're hip, like you're blocking your own sight. You're making yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I just <laughs> that. like I don't understand what it, like that's about. But like I, I, then I was like, well, what like what movie or what thing made it cool? Like who's doing it? Look, I need my sunglasses. Uh, <laughs> I need them. I'm like, no, you don't. You, you don't need them. You look ridiculous with them. And they're like, Yo, it's so cool, man. You got your shades on, or people that wear shades in the in like in the place. With the lights on, they're like, I need my shades. Like, why do you need yeah. shades? Like, what? I like, what is my eyes are too pretty? That's my theory. So I got too pretty eyes. <laughs> if you see my eyes, you're gonna be a dick. Like, you're gonna addicted to them, and you're gonna want to see them. So I gotta hide. I gotta hide my eyes. That's my theory. I guess. I feel like if they don't look good, don't bother wearing them. But my new passion in sunglasses is. I need to save my face from wrinkles, so I need to have sunglasses that I like so I can wear them. Okay. That's <laughs> what my wife says. She goes, you know, you squint when you're driving. I'm like, yeah. do what? And I'm like, I don't squint. I'm fine. That's some, I'm like, I'm good. I can see. What are you talking about? I'm not squinting. I'm good. Next, awesome. You got next time she calls you out, says, I'm squinting because I'm I'm playing, paying more attention to the road. I'm thinking about you, baby. I'm yeah. thinking, of, thinking about I'm your thinking safety. I'm thinking about your safety. <laughs> that, I'm squinting because I'm more focused on the, like, I'm, I'm focused, but now I'm more focused. I'm fo <laughs> more focused. Like, it's like, it's like, when you ever get hit with those, like, did you make that appointment yet? Like, no, well, come on. I, I didn't make that appointment yet. You, come on. I, why are you asking I'm about me? Do me the favor. You, you could make the appointment. Like, 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 just take that out for me. I don't want to call them, you know? That's what right. I think, you know? I would make the appointment for you, you know? You know, I would make phone calls for you. No one likes talking anyway. I wish you could just, you know, put in, you know, put it on online and be like, hey, I need an appointment. I mean, most places now, I guess you can do that, but. Right. Yeah. But right, why, why worry about me? Why, why do I need, why, how about you making an appointment? I need to make an appointment. Yeah, I'm gonna mess around and get slapped, but I'm gonna say it next time. You know, it's gonna happen. Dude, it's, that was your idea. So that's, <laughs> that's, nah, that's all you. That's I all you. I'm tell her. I'm gonna tell her. Aaron told me to say it. I would deny it fashionably, and I and I understand. And but I will still say that Aaron told me to I, say this. I would act, sir. I would act like I wouldn't even know you. <laughs> Because I do it professionally. <laughs> I know you go professional. Like, who are, are you? Who are you? Who are you? Has Where anyone you met this man before? Have you seen him before? You get other people involved too. I wish I could be like a fly on the wall and like everybody, like all you guys watching. And I just want to see like what either what conversations are being brought up in your guys' household or like who's complaining, like what what are they are they talking about? First it was pizza, then it was news. <laughs> 
And now they're talking about sunglasses? <laughs> Are What's they really on? interested in this? <laughs> like, what is happening right here? Yeah. Or like, or the other side of people are like, I knew it. That is right. I knew that. I knew that. I knew he. I knew he don't wear sunglasses, and he needs to wear sunglasses. I said that myself sometimes. I be telling him all the time to make that appointment. He don't listen to me. I told him. I told him. <laughs> all right. Well, the good news is we can move on from sunglasses. Who is the most important person you have ever met? So meeting with a group, you can discuss it together. But you're welcome to listen to our conversation. <laughs> Careful. Careful. I'm not, careful. you know, I was, I was thinking hard I, and I'm going to be careful and I'm going to choose the safe route and say my wife, you know, <laughs> that's the most important person I've ever met. But, you know, I was, I was really thinking about it. I'm not just, I'm not taking the easy route, you know, I'll be serious for a moment and say the impact she's had on my life um, has been nothing short of miraculous and God sent for me. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, Oh, Anyone who good. knows me knows that she you know. Make that appointment for you now that she heard that. <laughs> <laughs> she will make that appointment now. But um, <laughs> she didn't always live up here, and um, people could actually tell by just my face. I like I had the neon sign on my face whenever she was in town, just by how I looked. It was oh. just it was night and day, and she still doesn't believe that that it was in the night and day, Austin, when she when she was in town versus when she wasn't. Hmm. So it's just, it's been amazing, you know. Yeah. Most yeah. important person I've met. Hmm. All right. Questions. Here's a really good, it's a pretty big shift here. Right. John. That's a hard Whoever one. Wrote questions. It's like, Pete, sunglasses. <laughs> Most important person in your life that you ever met. And Wait, why? is it in your life? In your life? See, I didn't think it... the question that way. I think I oh, no. Heard, like... more important person that you have ever met. Well, I'm guessing in your life. Yeah, because I yes, feel like that that's assuming. Like that. It was more like the most important person in the world. Most important Jeez, wow, that's pretty. <laughs> that I'm, oh. I'll, okay, this is what I was thinking. I had two. One, I met Derek Jeter. So that was obviously the most important person. Okay. And then two, I lived in Taiwan and I met the prime minister of Taiwan. So that's how I took the question. I met I met Ice Cube when I was like five, and I feel like that type that tops all of those. But you know, I could be wrong. I'm not saying he's bigger than a prime minister of Taiwan, <laughs> but in my head, when I was five years old, and my dad goes, "You know who that is?" <laughs> he goes, "You know who that is?" I'm like, "Cube? That's not Cube. No way. Get out of town. That's Cube." And my father was so embarrassed. Yeah. Jeez. Um. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with people because they're obviously your family and your loved ones. Um, I've had I had lunch, I had dinner with James Earl Jones. Oh, so not that's, this one again, not this story. Here, one up in all of us, you I've know. I've actually been <laughs> one of these conversations, and we talked about this. I hear <laughs> this. Guy, Tell us. One of <laughs> everyone with this story. No, you know what? <laughs> go ahead, you tell the James Earl Jones story. That's, you met Ice. That's <laughs> pretty. Man. You met Ice and you were I'll five. Stop. You was that's that's a lot. If I met Ice Cube at five, I would have been like, so My life <laughs> no, is complete. you're not Barney. Why would I? Why would I give it? Like, why would I care who you are? Um, <laughs> no, it was it was you no. Know, we we he was he came to the Troy uh, Music Hall, um, and um, my my teacher knew the director or somebody that worked there at the time, and they get they got me free. I got free tickets, and then when I got the free tickets, um, they they asked me, you know, I'd like put on my charm. I was I was like a teenager too, so um, I looked like this, but just with not a lot of hair. And I was like, I really would like to meet him. And they're like, Oh yeah, sure. And he was like eating that tuna fish sandwich, and he like cut it in half, and he gave me. We were like, we had like a deep voice. So he's like, Oh, you sound like me. Way better than going to a restaurant. He split right. his sandwich right. with you. That's awesome. Right. I ate tuna fish, but I ate I ate that sandwich. I hate two of the fish though, but I ate, I was like, you ate that one. <laughs> but no, we had like a, a really good conversation about, like, I was asking, you know, about all the things. I didn't ask him anything about Star Wars. Everybody's like, did you ask him about Star Wars? I'm like, no. We, we talked about like, oh, it's like theater work and, and what is he doing now? And just like, you know, he gave me advice and whatnot. It was like a good, good conversation. And that's something that I think I will always hold on to. Wow, that's cool.
All right. Welcome to Christchurch Albany. My name is Jessica and I'm with Aaron and oh my gosh. It's okay. Austin, Austin. we just met. I'm going to say Anthony. I'm so sorry. We've been talking for 20 minutes. Hey, it's fine. You know, we just met. <laughs> we did just meet. This is how we build community. We meet online. <laughs> Um, so welcome to Christ Church Albany. We're so glad you joined us, whether you're in the building watching, whether you're in a watch party or online, um, maybe with your family or by yourself, welcome to church. Um, we believe that church isn't just a building, but it's a group of people. And so we're here building community online. We're building community um, in our homes, everywhere we go. So that's what we're all about. Um, if this is your first time, we want to welcome you to church and we hope that you will let us know your name and a little bit about you. you. We have a connect card at the top of the screen and you can fill that out. We'd love to connect with you and send you a gift. Um, maybe this is not your first time, but you haven't really connected with Christ Church Albany. We would love for you to take a next step. And um, the connect card is also good for that. We have a Facebook group that's called CCA Family. We have um, leaders who'd love to connect with you. Uh, anything that we can do for you, we'd love for you to join us. So please fill out that connect card. Um, forgot where I was. Uh, we believe to be generous people. <laughs> and uh, if you would like to give to Christ Church Albany, we are so grateful. If you have given in the past, if you'd like to give today, we are grateful. We believe in being generous in all areas, whether that be giving to your local church, giving to the people in your community, um, and also just having a, a life of hospitality, having people in your home when it's safe or in your backyard, um, and then you know finding ministries and nonprofits to give to. So we encourage you to give to Christ Church Albany if you would like. There is a um, button at the top that says give, or you can mail checks, and I believe an address will be posted in the chat if you'd like to do that. So um, before we go into worship, we want to spend some time praying together. We're a praying church. We believe that God hears our prayers and meets us when we spend time talking to him. And I'm sure many of you have seen in the news what's going on in India with COVID. It's gotten um, really bad there. They're losing people quite quickly. And um, so we want to pray. We join and partner with Vision Trust in Albany, and uh, not in Albany, in India. <laughs> and um, we have heard from them that they are in need of resources. They need our prayers and wisdom on how to help people that are very sick and losing family members. Um, I read an email that they've lost some younger pastors to COVID. And so figuring all that out. So we want to spend some time praying for the people of India. Um, Austin, if you would pray uh, for those that have lost loved ones. Aaron, if you'd pray for those on the front lines, helping the sick and working to get vaccines out. And I'm gonna pray for um, Merwin and um, Vision Trust there that we support. So uh, Austin, if you'd take it away. Lord, thank you for all that you've given us, especially in times of hardship during COVID. I ask that you look after the people who have passed away and their loved ones. Death is never easy. It has not been easy here. It has not been easy anywhere in the world. Um, things are particularly dismal right now in India with how things are just unfolding the way that it's unfolding. So much loss, people, I can't even imagine feeling what they're feeling. I ask that you give them space to breathe. I ask that you give them shields to get through this. I ask that you show them whatever grace that you have within you, because you do have it within you, to allow them to get through hell, all of this. In your name I pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much for um, waking us all up and bringing us here today. I ask that you continue to bless all the supporters, volunteers, and uh, medical staff, and all those who are providing services and needs um, to the people in India and are helping to distribute uh, medicine and and. Uh, other medical needs that the people need over there. I ask that you bless their hearts and their bodies. I ask that you keep them safe within your grace and within your love. 
I ask that you bless their hands as they make work and they your work as they continue to help and support the people in India. I know it's not an easy task and I know it can be uh, a very, very uh, stressful and then uh, a jarring um, task to, uh, to provide all that help. But I ask that you just be with those supporters, those frontline workers, those medical um, workers, those volunteers. Um, I ask that you be in those hearts and minds of those people and you stay within them and continue to support and love them and, and share your grace with them. And know that they are not alone, that we here, those who, who can't be over there, those who are here uh, are continuing to pray for them, to support them, to help support their families um, that are here while they're over there helping them um, from all over the world. I ask that you just continue to show your grace um, in us as we as a people unite together during this time of, of crisis, amen. And I thank you for Merwin and all the people that work with Vision Trust India. Lord, I thank you for the children that are supported um, through that ministry. God, I pray for wisdom and Lord, the resources that they need to help um, everyone that they reach there in India. God, I pray for an abundance, Lord, for, to meet all of their needs, God, as they ask you for what they need, Lord, that they would immediately see those needs met. <clears throat> God, I pray for divine appointments. Lord, I pray for miracles um, with the people that they come in contact with, Lord, that people will be healed um, and all of their needs will be met, Lord. I pray, um, God, that you would keep them safe and protected and healthy and strong, God, so that they can meet the needs of the people around them. And I just thank you for them and lift them up. Um, we encourage them even from here, God, that um, we believe in them, Lord, and we're with them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, guys, thanks for joining me here hosting and chatting it up before. Um, now we're going to go into a time of worship with Tyler. So thank you, Tyler, for joining us. And bye. Have a good one. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm. We ask you to join us and celebrate the goodness of Jesus.
Well, good morning, my name's John. I'm the lead pastor, and I'm so glad that you're able to join us this morning, uh, whenever you're joining us, or wherever you are joining us. Uh, so, do you remember elementary school? Uh, I don't know about you, but elementary school was one of the first times I learned lots of things, uh, but it was one of the first times that I learned that like there's a real pecking order in life. Uh, that, you know, there's some kids that get really great grades, and some kids that don't get as good of grades. Uh, there's some kids that are really fast and strong and some kids that are a little bit slower and less coordinated. Uh, there's some kids that have really fancy name brand clothes and there's some kids that don't have as fancy of clothes. There's some kids that are considered to be really cute or pretty and some that are considered to be not as cute and pretty. And so as a kid, I mean, you do whatever you can to be able to try to get to that top ladder. You know, you want to be at the top echelon, you know, you want to be at the top of the pecking order because you believe that if you were to get there, then that would make you happy. And as adults, it just kind of continues, doesn't it? Because I mean, there's, there's some adults that have really big, fancy houses and some that have smaller, simpler houses. Uh, there's some people that have big, you know, important jobs with great big paychecks and there's others with, you know, meager jobs with meager paychecks. Uh, there's some people that have kids that behave really, really well in seemingly every scenario. And there's others who have kids that seem like they're always just running around and chaotic. There's some people who have social media followings that, you know, they, they can post anything, it seems like. I mean, they put any picture out there and they're just getting all kinds of likes and all kinds of hearts. And other people, well, we post things and it just seems like we're not getting any likes and we're not getting any hearts. Uh, there's a writer and author I like named Andy Stanley. And he talks about that we all live in what he calls the land of er, uh, that we all want to be faster and we want to be taller, uh, you know, we want to be more successful -er and intellectual -er and, you know, more hair er. And we believe that if we were to able to get those things, then that would make us happy. Uh, that would be the key to success. And so, so many of us work our whole lives trying to achieve those things. You know, trying to get to that relationship status, trying to get to that, you know, job place, that education place, that level of attractiveness. And we believe that if we ever got there, then that would be the secret of happiness. And we just keep working and working and working and it's exhausting and it's tiring. And what I have found is that many times uh, I don't always feel like I'm there at all. And so instead, I, I want to be there. And so it forces me to do some things that I'm not all that proud of. Uh, first of all, uh, it can cause me to be pretty just kind of braggadocious because there's some things in my life that I am proud of. And so I want to make sure that everyone knows those things because if everyone knows those things, then maybe they'll think that I'm really great and important and that I should be, you know, at the, at the top of the pecking order. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, we had a area in the back of our yard that was a garden and it was terrible. We were just, we're not very good gardeners at all. Uh, and so we decided we were going to make it into a sandbox for our kids. And so we worked all day long Saturday to turn it from a garden into a sandbox. And as a part of that, we got two tons of sand delivered that we had to move into the sandbox. And I told lots of people that story because they asked me, hey, what'd you do over the weekend? And that's what I would tell them about. Let me tell you, every time I told that story, I emphasize the idea that we had two tons of sand delivered and I had to wheelbarrow all that sand and I had to shovel all that sand because I wanted people to think that I'm strong, uh, that I work hard, uh, that I do big things in the name of my kids because if that's what they saw about me then maybe they would think that you know maybe I'm you know one of those top tier cool kids on the playground uh, or sometimes what it can do is it can make me want to lie uh, or at least embellish the truth. 
Uh, it's interesting, uh, as a pastor, there's a, there's a joke that goes along with preachers sometimes where people will call, uh, they call it preacher math. Uh, that if you get a bunch of preachers together and you ask them, hey, how big is your church? You know, how many people did you have at church on Sunday morning? Uh, how many people came to this event? There's a tendency among preachers to try to inflate the number a little bit, to, to, to maybe round the number up, uh, to make it seem like it's a little bit bigger than what it really was. Because there's a part of me, maybe there's a part of you, that wants to take the things that I've done and just make them seem a little bit shinier, a little bit nicer, a little bit more important. So that way people will be impressed with me and they will think that I'm one of the, one of the great ones, uh, one, of the, one of the cool ones. Uh, or sometimes what it can make me do is it makes me hide. Uh, it makes me take the things that I, I don't want other people to see and make sure that nobody sees them. Uh, my faults, my failures, uh, the things that I don't like about myself. I try to make sure that I just always show my strengths and not show my weaknesses. Uh, this past week, I was looking back at uh, some of my social media pictures that I've posted. And it's amazing, I mean, there's so many pictures that uh, I've posted, maybe you're the same way, where, you know, for that picture I posted, there was another like 10, 15 that we also took that didn't make the cut. You know, someone wasn't looking quite right, you know, the smile wasn't quite right, or, uh, and then you know, even the picture that we did post, we cropped it and we filtered it. And then uh, I know the story behind a lot of the pictures that we've taken. And there's numerous pictures on our Facebook where you know it's, it's a holiday or it's a vacation. And, and I can tell you what happened right before that picture or right after, you know, when Ashley and I were, you know, arguing with each other or our kids were crazy or we were, you know, yelling and it just, the whole world was chaotic. But somehow we were able to rally and that picture at least looked good. And that's what we showed the world. And there's no way we would ever tell people about that argument or whatever else that happened right before there. Uh, or maybe the worst thing that I can do is that uh, I can try to make myself feel better by comparing myself to the people around me. Uh, and it's interesting, uh, I can do it really both ways. Uh, so when it comes to something like possessions, uh, I can look at the vehicle I drive. And if I see someone who's driving a vehicle that doesn't seem as nice as mine, then I can think, you know, oh, you know, I, I must be better somehow because look at the, the, the nice vehicle that I get to drive, you know, compared to yours. But then I see someone who has a much better car than mine and I think, oh, you, you just must be, you know, all image obsessed and you must be greedy, you know, and so I'm better than you because I'm not obsessed with that kind of stuff. And I can so easily make up a scenario about other people that brings them down so that it makes me feel better about myself because I believe that if I can feel better about myself, if I can be somehow one of the cool kids on the playground, then that is the secret to happiness, to be cool, to be important, to, to be good looking, to be funny, to be athletic, to, to be that person that I feel like I wanna be and I wanna make sure that everyone else knows. And how about you? Can you relate to any of those? Uh, do you ever have the, the tendency to brag about yourself and to make sure that other people know how great you are? Do you ever have the tendency to exaggerate the truth a little bit? Uh, do you ever hide the things that you want to make sure that no one else sees? Or do you ever compare yourself to other people? And as uh, followers of Jesus, or maybe people that are considering becoming followers of Jesus, we believe that there is a way better way to live. Uh, for the last few weeks and for the next many, many weeks going forward, we're going to be looking at Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and in this sermon, Jesus is talking about here's the way that he wants followers of him to live. Here's how Jesus, this is his like school of how the best way to live as a human being, if you most want to be happy in life, if you most want to be blessed, if you most want to really live what he calls eternal life right here on earth, Jesus describes here's what it looks like in this sermon. But the interesting thing, as we've talked about for the last few weeks, is it's many times a very counterintuitive, very countercultural, very upside down way to live. And today we're talking about that Jesus says that the secret of happiness, instead of trying to be the, the coolest kid on the playground, instead of trying to impress everybody, that the way to happiness, the way to a blessed life, he says, is to be meek. Uh, Jesus says that blessed are the meek because the meek will inherit the earth. And do you know what the meek are? Uh, the meek are the, the lowly. Uh, the meek are the humble. 
Uh, the meek are people that don't feel the need to brag about themselves to everybody else. Meek are people that don't exaggerate the truth. Uh, meek are people that instead of hiding the things about themselves, they are actually incredibly vulnerable and open with their failures and their faults and their doubts. And meek are people that don't compare themselves to other people, but instead encourage other people. Uh, we've been uh, reading a, a book with our elder team, uh, myself and the elders, called The Emotionally Healthy Church. Uh, some of you have maybe been a part of uh, our class, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality or Emotionally Healthy Relationships. If you haven't, then maybe you could take those in the future. We just love these courses. We think that they just give such good tips and tricks about how to live this Jesus upside down way of living. Uh, and we're reading this book about how we can really lead this as leaders and how we can really embody this as a whole church. Uh, and in a, a chapter, uh, he talks about the idea of being vulnerable, uh, of being meek. Uh, and he compares the kind of two ways of living, that there's one way where we live trying to be important, trying to be proud, uh, and there's another way where we live meek and vulnerable. Uh, and he kind of lays these out side by side, and I just want to give you a couple of these examples. He says that here's what a proud person looks like. A proud person is guarded and protective uh, about their imperfections and their flaws, doesn't want anyone else to know. But a meek person is transparent and weak. Uh, a proud person focuses on the positive, strong, successful parts of himself. But the meek person is aware uh, of their weak, needy, limited parts of who they are and they freely admit failure. Uh, people that are, that are proud are highly offendable and defensive. But people that are meek are approachable and, and are open to input. Is there anything that you see in me that I, I need to fix? I, I want to know. Uh, people that are proud naturally focus first on the flaws and mistakes and the sins of others. But people that are meek are aware of their own brokenness. They have compassion and they are slow to judge others. Uh, people that are proud uh, give their opinion a lot even when they're not asked. But people that are, are broken uh, are slow to speak and quick to listen. Uh, people that are proud don't get close to other people. They often don't have a lot of close friends. But people that are meek uh, are open and soft and curious about other people. Uh, people that are proud keep people from really getting to see what is going on on the inside. But people that are meek delight in showing vulnerability and weakness so that Christ's power may be seen. Uh, it says people that are proud like to control most situations. But people that are meek uh, can trust other people. Uh, people that uh, are proud uh, have to be right in order to feel strong and good. But people that are meek uh, understand that it's okay to say, I was wrong and I'm sorry. Uh, people that are proud often blame others. But people that are meek take responsibility for themselves. Uh, people that are proud hold grudges and rarely ask for forgiveness. But people that are meek don't hold other people in debt and are able to ask others for forgiveness as needed. Uh, people that are meek uh, are often offended and write people off. But people that are meek, uh, when they are offended, they ask questions and they explore what happened and try to put the relationship back together. Uh, when people uh, are proud, uh, they deny or avoid or withdraw from painful realities. And people that uh, are meek honestly look at the truth underneath the surface even when it hurts. Uh, people that are proud uh, have the right to prove, have to prove that I am right uh, when they are wronged. But people that are meek can let things go. Uh, people that are proud uh, are demanding. But people that are meek uh, assert myself respectfully and kindly. Uh, and lastly, people that uh, are proud are highly self-conscious and concerned about how other people perceive me. How do I stack up here on the playground? But people that are meek are more aware of God and others than the impression that they are making. They are more concerned about other people than they are about themselves. Uh, there's a campaign that was going around uh, a, a little while ago and to be honest I don't know that much about the campaign I just really like the slogan uh, and the slogan was I am third uh, and the idea behind it was that when it comes to who's the most important person uh, that Jesus is the most important person other people are next and then finally 
is me. That when I walk in somewhere, I'm not most concerned about what I need and what I want and what other people are going to think about me, but I'm most concerned about what's God doing here and what are other people and how can I love and serve them? How can I put other people in front of myself? Uh, I want to look uh, quickly at a story of Jesus. This is from uh, Mark chapter 10. And uh, if you know Jesus, I mean, Jesus was constantly trying to do this. Uh, constantly, Jesus was constantly trying to kind of flip the grid on here's who's the most important. I mean, Jesus came into a world where it was, you know, here's the most important uh, race, here's the most important gender. Uh, you know, if you have these kind of spiritual accomplishments, then obviously you're the most important. You know, if you have these, this kind of wealth, if you have this kind of land, uh, then you're obviously the most important. And Jesus was always trying to flip the script on that. He was always trying to reverse engineer. Here's who the most important people is are and say it's a way more of a level playing field and we are all even in God's sight. Uh, and in uh, Mark chapter 10, Jesus has a couple great examples of this. Uh, there's a time where uh, they brought some kids to Jesus and Jesus' disciples were like, whoa, well, like, Jesus doesn't have time to be spending time with little kids. I mean, he needs to spend time with big, important people. You know, do you know who Jesus is? And Jesus is like, no, 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 no. Kids are exactly who I want to spend time with. Uh, and then there's a guy who's a, it's called a rich young ruler. So he's, he's a ruler and he's rich. And just like, everybody's like, wow, obviously this is the kind of guy that Jesus is gonna want as his follower. But Jesus tells the guy, actually, uh, you need to give away everything you have because it's gonna be way easier for you to follow me if you give away all your riches. Your money, all your riches, all the things that you think are making you important will actually get in the way of you becoming a total follower of me. Uh, and Jesus' disciples are, and all of his followers were listening to all these things that Jesus says. And like maybe many of us, I think a lot of them were like, okay, yeah, that, that sounds nice. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, kids are important. You know, yeah, maybe being rich is and all, you know, all that. And you know, we should love people and we should be generous and we shouldn't strive to always be the most important person around. Uh, and that all sounds good. But I think there's another part of them. Like there's a part of us that's like, okay, I, I want to do all that Jesus stuff, but I, I still really believe those lessons I learned on the playground. I still really believe that like the secret to happiness is like attractiveness and, and money and, and stuff and, and power and job and it, that I want all that stuff and if I can fit Jesus into that, then that will be good too. And Jesus wants to drive us to I think just a way deeper and more radical reality to that. And Jesus' disciples had heard all these things that Jesus had taught, this new way to live, and just, they still weren't really getting it. This is what it says in uh, uh, Mark chapter 10, starting verse 35. It says, Then James and John, who were two of Jesus' disciples, uh, they were the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Jesus, we have, we have a favor we want you to do for us. Uh, Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? He asked. And they replied, Let one of us sit at your right, and the other at your left in your glory. Uh, like, hey Jesus, we got this idea that you're, you're gonna be a king, you're gonna be a Messiah, and you're gonna have some sort of a kingdom. We don't know exactly what that's gonna look like, but somehow it's gonna be important, it's gonna be powerful, and whatever that is, hey, could we like have the two most powerful positions? Like, yeah, you're gonna be in charge, but like, can we be like, you know, number one and two in charge of everything else? Uh, and I don't know about you, but like, I've said that kind of a prayer before of, Hey, 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 Jesus, like, hey, can you do me a favor? Here's what I want. Like, I, I want you to make me great. I, I want you to make me powerful. Uh, hey, is there a way that you could like, really just make me, you know, uh, you know uh, can you make the sermon really good and really funny and, you know, that way people will, will like me and they'll think I'm smart? Uh, is there a way that, you know, when people see me, you know, out in public, you know, that they will think that, I mean, that, that guy's really respectable and that guy's a great dad, you know? Hey, is there a way that you can somehow give me enough money so that I can, you know, do all these projects around my house? You know, is there a way that you can help me get this promotion? Is there a way, is there a way that somehow you can make me great in what I've determined to be great. Uh, and Jesus says, hey, I, I do want to make you great. And I do want you to be happy. But then Jesus is going to lay out a different way of what that looks like. Uh, it says, when the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. They, they were so mad that they, that James and John would have the audacity to ask this question, hey, is there a way that we can be the greatest? And I think what made them so mad is not that James and John asked it, but that James and John asked it first because they all 
wanted to be the greatest. But Jesus called them together and said, you know, that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. See, you know how it works on the playground. People are always trying to work to be the best. People are always trying to work to be the greatest. And, and if you, you become the cool kid, if you become the most important, then you want to make sure that everyone else knows that you are better than them. And Jesus says, but not so with you. I want you to live different. I want you to live in this new upside down kingdom. And here's how. He says, instead, whoever wants to become great among you must become your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He says, here's the way that I want, if you want to be great, here's the way is it's not trying to become better and better and better, but it's trying to become more of a servant, more of a servant, more of a servant. It's walking into a room and instead of saying, all right, how can I make sure that everyone in this room likes me, thinks I'm great? How can I walk into a room and how can I meet the needs? How can I serve the other people that are here? How can I become meek? Uh, Back uh, before COVID, uh, there was a, an event happening downtown. It was like a big press conference. And uh, we got invited to, uh, I got invited to come to this press conference and I was so excited because I mean, there's gonna be lots of important people there, you know, government officials, business leaders. And I thought, you know, man, this is gonna be a place where I'm gonna rub shoulders with all them, you know, and then I'm gonna be there and everyone will think that I'm really important too. And then they said, they, they clarified, they said, hey, we want you to come. And like, hey, we heard that you as a church, you have a popcorn machine. Would you be willing to come and make popcorn for us? And I was like, I, that's not what I want to do. Uh, I, I want to come and like be on stage. I want to talk. I want to be one of the important people. Like I, I felt in that moment, like yeah, I, I'm too good to just to be in the background making popcorn. And, and sometimes in our families and our business, uh, in church, uh, in our communities. We get asked to do things that we feel like, yeah, I, I, I want to do the thing that's going to really make me look great. But is there a way that we can intentionally ask to do the things that are the, the humble, the, the meek, uh, the servant thing? Uh, another place this comes in is uh, just in my family. Uh, just about every Sunday, we have some sort of a conversation about, hey, what does the weekend look like? And everyone will give their schedules, you know, and I have my schedule and my things I want to get done, and my wife has hers, and my son has his, and my daughter has hers, and we all kind of lay it out. And my tendency is to think, okay, we all have our stuff going on, but like, I mean, come on, like, obviously mine is the most important. Like, obviously, you know, the things I got to get done this week are the, the most, if all you guys get your stuff done, that's great too, and I'll try to help when I can, but like, hey, the most important is that I get my things done. And maybe what I need to do is instead of saying, hey, how, how can I get my things done first? How can I make sure that other people's things get done? How can I make sure that maybe someone else is getting their needs met before mine? Uh, how can we become meek? How can we become servants? And for you, well, what I would love for you to do is to think through the places that you go uh, in your week. Uh, your home, how can you serve? How can you be meek? How can you forgive? Uh, how can you find ways to, to be lowly, not you know, the most important in your house this week? As in your office, you know, instead of you know sitting there thinking, you know, hey, I hope my idea comes across. I hope you know the boss, your boss really likes my my thing. Uh, I hope you know I get a raise. I hope I get a compliment. How can you really go out of your way to make sure that someone else gets a compliment? You know, to really push someone else's success instead of yours. Uh, when it comes to your friendships, uh, when it comes to the people that you walk by this week, are there people that you regularly think like, all right, here's the people that are really important that I want to make sure that I impress, and here's the people that's like, man, I, I walk past that person every day, but like, I mean, they, they don't, they don't matter. They're not an important person. How can you lift up someone else? Are the people that you compare yourselves to? How can you find ways to encourage and support and love them? Because Jesus says, the more we lean into that, that that is the secret to being blessed and to being happy. Uh, and as always, Jesus models that. 
Uh, Jesus models that with his own wife. I mean, he came from the splendor of heaven to live here on earth as a servant, uh, to live a very meager existence, to often be homeless, to often be oppressed, and to eventually be killed on a cross. And he did that because he wanted to live a meek, humble, servant life. He said that even the Son of God didn't come to be served, but to serve. And he did that because I believe that he was living the best eternal life possible, and he wants us to follow in his footsteps. So as we take communion today, let's take some time to remember Jesus and his love and to follow in that servant lifestyle. Let's take the bread together. Let's take the juice. Let's pray. Uh, Jesus, thank you for the chance we have to be able to follow you and to serve you. Help us to be meek. Help us not to always just work to be the most impressive, to be the most braggadocious, to make other people be amazed by our accomplishments and to hide the things that we don't want other people to see. But help us to live this different way where we freely admit, here's the ways in which I've blown it. Here's the parts about me that I don't like as much, to brag about other people uh, and to not compare ourselves, but instead to encourage and serve and lift other people up and help us to do this in your name. Amen. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us for church today. We are so glad that you came. We hope you found it helpful to join in on the chat, uh, focus on God and spend time learning together. We believe that church is not just a building and it's certainly not just a Sunday thing. We wanna become more like Jesus every day. And there are a couple things that we can do to help us grow in that journey with Jesus. One being our next steps email. If you are already on our email list, you'll be receiving that shortly. If not, um, it will be posted on the Facebook page in just a little bit. This email has steps um, for questions to ask yourself and others, as well as prayers to pray throughout the week and activities. Um, it's a great tool to continue that journey of what we've already been talking about this week. Another thing that you can do, our leaders would love to know how we can help you take whatever next step you're ready for. Um, you can fill out the connect card, which is at the top of the screen at any time, and let us know any questions, prayer requests, anything we can help you with. We would love to um, come alongside you in that. Um, also, like I said, church is not just a building. It's a community of people and we want to be here for each other. So if anything come up, comes up in your week, please let us know. Do not hesitate to connect with us. We would love to hear from you, pray with you, and help in whatever way we can. So we hope to see you next week. Join us at 1030 for our service. Um, if you want to get on a little bit earlier at 1010, we'll have a chat going with some fun questions to get to know each other. And we hope to see you there. Have a great week.